Hello, I'm Jody Freed, Executive Director here at Catamount Arts, and I'm pleased to be using this opportunity not only to thank our outgoing Gallery Director, Catherine French, for the amazing work she's done since coming to Catamount six years ago, but also to introduce the visual arts community to Catamount's Artistic Director, Molly Stone, who will be overseeing both the Freed Family and Rankin Family Galleries going forward. Although Catherine will be retiring as Gallery Director, we're pleased that she'll be connected to Catamount in her new role as Gallery Director Emerita, lending a helping hand when needed. Many of you are already acquainted with our Artistic Director, Molly Stone, as the public face of our KCP Presents performances and the Levitt Amp music series at Dog Mountain, and the moving force behind so much of what happens behind the scenes here at Catamount. You'll all be hearing from Molly over the next few months as she presents recorded interviews with a select number of artists whose work is hung here in the juried show. But tonight, we'll be giving you a virtual tour of this remarkable exhibition and announcing awards. Now, I'd like to take a moment to remember Robert Manning, who passed away in 2021. Bob served as a Catamount board member where for over a decade, he championed our visual arts programming in the local community and spent hundreds of hours curating and hanging gallery exhibitions in this space. Without Bob's tireless efforts and incredible generosity, we wouldn't be here today. Finally, I'd like to offer a heartfelt congratulations to not only the artists whose work was selected for Arts Connect, but to all of those who submitted work to this very competitive exhibition. As artists, you are part of a remarkable community and one that is at the center of all that we do at Catamount. Thank you so much for your engagement. And now, please welcome Molly Stone to announce the awards. Molly? I'm Molly Stone, the Artistic Director at Catamount Arts, and I am now overseeing the Freed Family Gallery and the Rankin Gallery. And I am pleased and honored that my first task here today is to announce the winners and the honorable mentions of our Arts Connect Catamount Arts Annual Members Juried Show. First prize will be shared by two artists. They are Anne Young of Barton, Vermont, for her evocative painting, I Come From a Place No One Has Ever Been, and Mary Topanga of St. Johnsbury, Vermont and Portland, Oregon, for her poignant mosaic, Jesus Free. Second prize goes to Courtney Sanborn of Dover, New Hampshire, for her provocative embroidered fiber art triptych, Baby Jake's, The Expulsion, and Bountiful Harvest. Third prize goes to Mary Rowley Hall of Hardwick, Vermont, for her exquisitely crafted folded paper collage, Starry Night, inspired by the work of Van Gogh. This year, we are pleased to announce a fourth prize, which goes to James Dye of Worcester, Mass, for his intricate and graphic pen and ink drawing, Citadel of the Roach Queen. Hi, um, I'm Catherine French. I'm the outgoing gallery director for Catamount Arts, and I'm very pleased to be here to introduce the sixth annual juried show uh, for members, and this has been one of the great pleasures in my time here, uh, is overseeing this show, and it's a great honor for me to be here uh, to say goodbye in this way to, a show, to an exhibition that is really stunning and incorporates so many different kinds of work, so much talent, and we're here in St. Johnsbury at the Catamount Arts Center in the Freed Family Gallery and are going to be touring the Freed Family Gallery and the Rankin Family Gallery and I hope you enjoy what you see today. Um, I'm first going to start off, we're, we're starting here. Um, this was a very, as many people know, we give cash prizes um, to the first, second, we give first, second and third cash prizes each year and um, this has been always really difficult because the work is just so great. There's so much um, that's been contributed and it's really hard to choose. But uh, this year we split the first prize. Um, one person who, the one, this painting um, is one of the first prize winners and it's by Anne Young. Uh, she is a, paint, a Vermont painter who lives in Barton, Vermont and it is called, I Come From a Place Where No One Has Ever Been. And I think uh, given the last two years, this is how many of us feel, that we've 
all come from a place and we are now inhabiting a place where no one has ever been. And um, in addition to this being a really very skillfully painted painting, uh, it, I found it to be very evocative, um, heartfelt, um, and somewhat surreal. I think one of the things that was interesting to me about the work that came in for this show was that so much was dealing with un, uh, untraditional materials. Um, and I, I'm one of those people that really believe that fine art and fine craft, uh, there's no line between them, that they really are one and the same. So I think that when I looked at and considered work, um, this really amazingly beautiful painted silk scarf stood out to me. And the, it just resonated with the style and the ability to really create those forms. And then when um, the fiber arts that came in, the, these, this um, fiber piece, this felt piece, and then Barbara Bendix with Prague, um, this is a really unconventional. And then it kind of matched up with other things that came in. Um, this um, Persian rug print, which is really a very skillful print, um, seemed to find a natural partner with the uh, Garden Griffith. So uh, I think everything kind of came together in this way. And while there was a lot of traditional landscape in the show, I found some of the landscapes to be um, a very creative interpretation about our natural world. Uh, these three paintings right here, which were stunning apart, but absolutely stunning together, um, really spoke to me about the way that we can see in landscape in different ways, that we can identify different colors, that we can um, sometimes feel detached um, and floating off into the atmosphere. Uh, the top one by C.J. Laurie, um, Spring is in the Air. You can see that spring is actually in the air. Pieces in this show found natural partners, and that was the case with this abstract painting and this uh, somewhat ab abstract interpretation of landscape called Peninsula by Elizabeth Nelson. Um, these two seem to migrate towards each other when I was trying to put the show together. Um, really beautiful, beautiful paintings, but um, that they worked well together or played in the same space in a very nice way. During uh, the pandemic, some of us really considered loss or fragility. Uh, and then these two photographs, actually the three photographs that are here, this by William Betcher, uh, this is from, this is a manipulated photograph. It is, um, put on acrylic, the acrylic's leaning against the wall so you get a double image. These were taken from his um, collection of antique photographs of Civil War soldiers. So this is a Union soldier. Um, he, his hand is on his chest. He is looking um, poignantly. Um, we don't know if he survived or not, but it seemed to me to speak to this time, this feeling of memory and loss. Um, beside that, there's one um, by Rosie Prevost, um, who teaches here in St. Johnsbury at the St. Johnsbury Academy, an amazing photographer. Uh, hers is called Fragile Together, this series of stacked eggshells. I think all of us have sort of, who were lucky enough to be able to be isolated or <laughs> locked down with family members, um, certainly felt that fragility of um, the, the ability to be fortunate enough to be together, but the fragility. Um, and then this other piece by Jim Collins, uh, this photograph, it's something we see in Vermont, but the um, ability to actually see that in the landscape. These are abstract forms of tires and tire tracks uh, in the mud and with covered up by snow, but it really is one of the nicest photographs that I've ever seen that interpret the Vermont landscape in a kind of abstract way. I think none of us were unaware of the time of which we're, in which we're living, uh, and that certainly came home to me with the, this really beautiful triptych called Talk About the Weather. Um, this is by an artist named Kata Hall, who is working and very conscious of climate change, and this series of paintings um, really addresses uh, the weather and how it's kind of heating up. Right next to it is another um, piece, which is called Red Mask, 
I, I think that the meaning is obvious. It's an artist who's looking at herself. It's a self-portrait, but her face is obscured by a mask, which so many of us find ourselves wearing right now. Um, moving over here, this really lovely little um, gouache painting by Margaret Clayton called Locked. Uh, it's a lock on a door. Many is, is felt locked in. And then, um, again, the um, work with fiber arts, artists who are working in non-traditional ways of an embroidery um, with a school, it's um, sort of an imitation school notebook where you need to repeat yourself so you actually remember something, or is it a punishment of someone having to write again and again in these uncertain times? Artists were thinking about climate change. Um, this large piece by Music Weaver, um, she's taken actual foliage and plants that I don't think were dried when she started working with it, um, but it shows the slow fade over time. This is really a piece um, that's um, temporal, but it's called temp control. So I think that um, in addition to it being a very lovely figure emerging um, from this foliage, it's a figure that will um, degrade over time, and I think that's part of the message of the piece. Um, over here, there, uh, this entire wall really deals with kind of ideas about landscape um, and looking closely. So these two pieces by Deborah Claffey and Robin Reynolds. Um, this is someone, these are two artists, one working in encaustic and the other working in acrylic, uh, who are looking closely at individual flowers and plants um, in the same way that Susan Larrakis is looking at her fern glade. So Leon Bream, she's creating paper sculpture. And this is um, light, it's ephemeral. Uh, she's creating amazing forms that are very solid, that have structure, and yet they are made out of paper that she's ground up. Um, she's an artist working in Walcott and very um, innovative in her approach to this material. Uh, below her, Robin Wiedemeyer, uh, two pieces. It's a diptych, The Enchantress and the Wheel of Life. Uh, these are photographs that are um, otherworldly and really quite touching. Okay, I think like many of us, artists have spent a great deal of time outdoors, alone, walking in the landscape and being able to observe um, the interesting things. This lower piece, um, Sumic Berries Remains the Last Year by Peter Swalski. Uh, is such an amazing photograph. It's an artist who lives very nearby um, in Sugar Hill, New Hampshire, and Sharon Kenny Biddle, Mountain Path. I can just imagine this artist walking through, gathering memories, um, and being able to translate it uh, to paper when she's back in the studio. Second place winner is Courtney Sanborn, who is a, an artist who has cr used uh, non-traditional materials uh, this is collage, this is uh, assembled glitter and uh, you know pieces of fabric, but also an amazing piece of embroidery uh, that she's using traditional craft uh, to create a narrative that is edgy, that's provocative, uh, that is entirely personal uh, and an expression of her um, experience of um, the world and thinking about art. Uh, second place winner was Mary Rowley Hall, Starry Night. Uh, I think anybody who's a, uh, had ever had any art history course knows Van Gogh's Starry Night, so this is an inter her interpretation of it, um, but certainly something that she might have been ex that she might have seen in the Vermont sky. But I think looking closely at this, uh, viewers will be amazed. This is folded paper, so this is not a drawing, it's not a painting, it is individual folds of paper that you know, are, is very labor intensive, very thoughtful, uh, very meditative on a night that all of us might see in our imagination. What was really amazing to me was the sense of color and the really joyful, exuberant use of bright colors that might have clashed but work so well together. So Marjorie Kay with her mother tree, this, this odd piece of looking very closely into the 
inner workings of a tree, the Van Gogh's star, you know, Mary Raleigh Hall's Starry Night, or Naomi Boston's Flowers for Her Hair, uh, the bright red and the bright blue and the bright, you know, acid greens and oranges all working together. Um, again, these found partners in the show. These found other paintings that they could play well with, but um, even by themselves, there's this exuberance, and you can just imagine an artist going into their studio and, and finding this. Another honorable mention is James Dye, uh, Citadel of the Roach. This is pen and ink. Uh, it is a graphic that is odd, it's quirky, this roach and these roach-like characters are in a world of their own. Uh, I think if you look at it very, very carefully, you could spend hours and hours trying to understand and figure out and follow all the pathways through this amazing piece. Um, but I think that uh, it's certainly worth the time. We're in Vermont, people hunt. Um, deer this season tend to like to hide, but apparently this one didn't hide well enough in Kathy Black's painting, Hunting. Uh, above on the wall next to it is um, Frankie Gardner's uh, painting of a deer entitled Looking Up, and um, perhaps this deer had better luck. Below that, the two paintings by Ann Sargent Walker uh, of a bird landing on someone's hand. Uh, is evocative of something we might see or hope for. The landscape uh, came up again and again uh, in paintings that I saw. I think artists spend a lot of times outdoor, time outdoors. Vicki Perrette, Willow Heights Trail, and Stephanie Gordon's um, Canopy Diptych. Uh, these are both honorable mentions. Really lovely, beautiful paintings, like so many other paintings in the show, but it, they just... Um, not only really stood out, but also seemed to fit together. Another honorable mention is Joanne Vecchiola's cascading ceramic piece of flowers and leaves coming down through the landscape, um, but very closely observed, like so many pieces in here. Um, there is going through, again, the landscape comes up again and again, uh, Andrea Poe's um, going in on a road into the clouds. Um, Steve Imrich is uh, looking down on uh, aerial view. Sharing first prize with Anne Young is Mary Pogna. Uh, this is a mosaic, a glass mosaic called Jesus Free. Uh, it is actually a portrait of her sister who was in care for a long time. And uh, she was able to capture not only this um, representation of her sister, but her feelings about losing her sister in this way. So Jody, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure working with you. And Molly, thank you so much because it's been, I, I can't imagine passing this along to anybody who's more capable and more really excited about doing it. So thank you. Thank you, and learning from you over these last couple of months and knowing that I'm still going to have you in my corner <laughs> makes me um, so much more confident right. that we will we'll be able to do this going forward. Right, right. So. Yeah, it just reminds me of six years ago when you found Catamount. And we were in the back parking lot, we had an right, event. Right. At that point we had the, uh, the Outback, right? And there was an yes. event there for arts education. Yeah. And you came up and introduced yourself because uh, you had just been retiring from your previous engagement. Right. Um, and we started a conversation about what could visual arts look like at Catamount if we took it to the next level. And here we are today. So thank you for everything you've done to create this platform to hand off to Molly now. And then thank you also for agreeing to continue to be there uh, to hold our hands as we take this next big important step. Well, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Molly does. So. This year we have several honorable mentions. Bill Betcher for his manipulated photograph, Ghost Number One. Deborah Claffey for her encaustic indigo ice again. Sharon Kenny Biddle for her watercolor, Mountain Path. 
Celia Kane for her painting, Grace Obstructs the Rising Rocks of Chaos. Stephanie Gordon for her painting, Canopy Diptych. Vicki Perrette for her painting, Willow Heights Trail, number three. Kevin O'Brien for his mixed media collage, Train and Carriage, after Van Gogh. Robin Reynolds for her painting, Jack Manji Clematis. Misuk Weaver for her mixed media collage, Temp Control.